Hi, my name is Phineas O'Hara and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing a book, this one called Living an Orgasmic Life. And I've decided to actually start making some book review videos because I've started to read a lot more actually during lockdown. And I've read some incredible books about sexuality and especially about sacred sexuality. And I've been learning a lot, which is fantastic for me because just um, yesterday or the day before, I celebrated 11 years since I decided to become a sex blogger. So my website has now turned 11. So that's a massive milestone for me. And yes, I wanted to, it's really nice to actually have been in the sector of sexuality and sex positivity for so long, for 11 years, and learn something new. And that's something I did not expect. And that's something that happened when I was reading this book. So anyway, I'm gonna, what am I gonna talk about today? I'm gonna talk about uh, a bit about the background of this book, why I read it, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and who I, rec who I would recommend it to. So first of all, a bit of background. Sorry about the noise, it's just so hot, I don't want to put the aircon on, I don't like aircon. So, a bit of background about this book, Living an Orgasmic Life, Heal Yourself and Awaken Your Pleasure. And this book is written by Jeannette Paylet, I hope I've pronounced that right. And she is a sex and intimacy coach. And I think she's in her late 50s now. However, she didn't start this journey until she was already over 50 and she'd had a sexless marriage for 20 years. And this is, even though I'm sure it must have been very difficult, I find that incredibly inspiring to think that you just don't know what's gonna happen in your life, you know, and uh, not just with sexuality, but to have such a massive life change later in life is just, it's quite mind blowing really. You just never know where, where life can lead you. And I find it very inspiring, especially there's one chapter that says, imagine that the best sex of your life is still ahead of you. And that just, it just makes you think, oh my God, oh my God, who's my next lover? Oh, next lover's amazing. So that's really, really inspiring. So she went on this um, tantric journey and then, and went through lots of her own healing. And this book, um, it's got two parts. Um, let me go through it. So part one is about healing yourself from shame, sexual abuse, and physical trauma. And the second part is awakening your pleasure. So for me, uh, as someone who I consider myself to be a sexpert, I was attracted to this book because of the title. So now I'm gonna talk about why I read this book. Um, so the, the title really brought me in because I've been uh, talking about my own orgasmic lifestyle for quite some time now. However, however my interpretation of an orgasmic lifestyle is a little bit different because um, I, I tend to talk about all the other aspects of my life that um, are orgasmic, not just the uh, sexual part. <laughs> it's just a whole lifestyle thing. But this is really focused on um, sexuality and how it can really improve the other areas of your life. And so I, the title really grabbed my attention, but I assumed that because of my sexpert status and experience that this book would be kind of like really easy reading for me. So it really opened me up to some sensations and things that I did not expect, to be honest. Um, it was very enlightening. So especially the, the first part, which is about, um, what was it again? Uh, healing healing yourself from shame, sexual abuse, and physical trauma. Because I was actually brought up um, Catholic, very strict Catholic uh, education, and I was taught that sex was bad, and um, any women who indulged in sex, sexual activity before marriage that wasn't about procreation, well, obviously that just happens in a marriage, were not nice words. And yeah, so you know that purity culture, <laughs> yeah, terrible. The obsession with virginity and one rule for the guys, one rule for the girls. And I was just not down with that at all, especially not when I started to discover my own hormones. So yeah, it was very difficult to, well, I, I, I was brought up in this very Catholic cocoon, but I was also in the UK. So I was able to kind of compare and contrast the uh, liberal side with a, with a conservative side. I know which one I like more. So I have had my fair share of um, 
stories of shame and trauma when it comes to sexuality and I really wasn't prepared to face all these demons again when I was reading this book. I found it incredibly, incredibly profound. I found that I still have work to do to kind of overcome these things that I thought were were kind of um, sorted for me. So it really brought up a lot of feelings that I thought were, were I dealt with, but they were actually more, they were actually dormant. So I've kind of awoken these sensations that I really need to, um, to go over again. So that was very, um, very strange for me. And not just about sexual things, a bloody dog. Ah! Anyway, it was also about um, things about intimacy and, and attachment styles. And that was the part that really kind of, threw me off in, in an emotional way because there is um, an analysis or not, a little chart about different um, attachment styles and it was nothing that I didn't know already about myself but they talk about childhood attachment styles by John Bowlby, Bowlby 1969 and, it, it, and they talk about secure attachment, avoidant attachment, ambivalent attachment and anxious avoidant attachment. And I would say I'm probably um, avoidant attachment. So it just really um, kind of made me think a lot about my childhood and about my future because I'm kind of um, a single child free woman who and I was thinking about, oh my God, how, and this is nothing new to me, but it was just, I just felt like I was looking at myself in, in with a whole new perspective and analyzing my own um, my own life situation and I wasn't really sure if I liked what I was seeing it was kind of like oh my god then I realized I didn't really have any choice kind of thing I think I've been I've rebelled so much against the what was supposed to be traditional for for women you know just to to get married and reproduce and and have a um, a partner who pays for my accommodation and food and everything else so um so yeah, I think I've gone against all of that, but sometimes, um, not that I desire that, but I think in life, if you do something very different from everyone else, there's always a time when you when you question it. I'm sure people who take the conventional path question that as well, but I was really thinking, oh my God, there was, because for example, it talked about going for people who are um, kind of unavailable. And I've had um, situations like that, I've, I've um, I've actually gone for, I've really been interested in lovers who are emotionally unavailable, geographically unavailable. So this kind of complements my avoidance style. It's almost like a defense mechanism. And I think I just didn't really see it like that before. I think I just thought it was, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But um, I do think I still have, have some work to do on my, on my attachment style. So I've been, um, working on that a lot actually in the last month um, since I finished reading this book. I actually finished reading it over a month ago. Um, it was very, very intense. So, so then when we get to the, um, and also another thing about the style of this book, how it's, um, it's really interesting because it's, um, the author is taking her own personal experience and, and bringing and um, weaving it in with some of the theories and work that she does with some different, with different clients. With, so you've got some like her own experience, some theories, and then some examples, and it seems it's very seamless. Um, so it's not like you're reading different, lots of different um, random texts. It seems it's all very, it's very goes well together, very very well. So when we get onto the more kind of sexy part, after all the trauma and the shame, which is really really important, because I think there's so much shame anyway. Even if you don't have um, a kind of religious or conservative upbringing we still live in a society that on one hand seems to be obsessed with sex but on the other is it's kind of very it's still censored on social media it's still kind of very 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 taboo still so on the uh let me see what the second what it was about again okay so awakening your pleasure and that started to talk about beginning the journey of sexual healing and awakening and connecting with the body and tantra oh my god and how to reignite your shrinking libido so i really love um i'm reading a lot about tantra and and tao taoist um, approaches to sexuality recently i really love how sex is seen as something that's a part a very healthy part of a relationship and of a lifestyle and how it can 
be beneficial for the rest of your life. It's not just something private that you do. Well, it is, but that you never, you never should talk about. Or um, I think it's just something that should be definitely embraced. It's part of a healthy lifestyle. And I'm just really interested in Tantra. I think it just, um, you know, it's not just about in, out, in, out, shake it all about sex. It's more about sensuality, taking your time, intimacy, and having this communion of body connection with your partner. I just find it, I find it really, really, really special. I'm getting way more into that kind of thing lately. I'm so into sacred sex, actually, lately that um, I don't think I could indulge in a casual kind of tinder sex i think i need to i need someone to make love to my soul and not just my body or my vagina you know what i mean so that's something that i really love about this um this type of sexuality and also this book has lots of exercises in it and um so it's a whole it's, it's very complete very 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 complete and so yeah i think i've told you lots of things that i liked about it and what i didn't like about it um what I didn't like about it. Well, I think I was a bit sad to finish the book and, I, and the author I don't think has any other books to read. So I'll be very interested in reading more books like this for sure. Um, so that's one one problem. I hope, I hope she's writing some more books. And um, yeah, I did, um, what I didn't like about the book. Well, um, my own personal experience was just like a big, <gasps> oh my God, when I was going through the trauma and shame part, which is something I did not expect. I, I wouldn't say that was something I, didn't like but it was a little bit let's say unpleasant at times and one of my friends actually um, re um has bought this book as well after seeing my instagram post about it and she has actually encountered the same sensation actually with um facing her demons from the past again so she's going to to kind of go do some do some work on herself and uh and start living an orgasmic life so i definitely recommend this book to anyone who wants to increase their pleasure or anyone who's just interested in sacred sexuality um you know going beyond the kind of um tinder one night stand hookup culture type sex i think it's really uh it's very digestible as well so yes yeah, so anyone who's interested in living an orgasmic life should definitely check it out anyway i'll leave a link um, to buy it in the description below and I'm going to be making more reviews of books and if you have any book recommendations for me I would love 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 to hear them read them because uh, I'm getting so into books now I, th I think I spend about an hour at least an hour a day reading and I'm just going <laughs> I'm really thirsty for knowledge so if you can enlighten me with something that you think is life-changing or enlightening then please let me know in the comment section below and if you'd like to make uh, ask me any questions about sexuality, orgasms, or orgasmic lifestyle, then please don't hesitate to write to me at venus at venusohara.org, or you can add me on Instagram at venusohara. Thanks for watching.